All right, we got YK Glizzy in the building. What's popping? You already know, man. I'm just chilling out here. Okay, okay. All right, I'm gonna start this like from the beginning, like before the rap stuff. Like, when did you first start out rapping? Um, I first started rapping when I was like 12 or 13. Okay. Back in grade eight, you know what I'm saying? I used to just like write in the back of the classroom and shit. Where do I? And just freestyling shit for the kids at the school and shit. But then I just started recording because my older brother was like a rapper and shit, so I kind of got into it too, you know? Okay, okay, okay. So, um, where did you grow up like most of your life and stuff? I grew up in Durham, to be honest, you know? I grew up in like. Oshawa area, I moved to Bowmanville, I, I even lived in Scarborough for a bit, you know? Okay, but okay. originally, I'm from Detroit, you know? I was uh, born, in the States? Yeah, I was born in Detroit, you know? Oh, okay, okay. And your family just moved out here and, and stuff like that? Or you just came out here, Dolo? Oh, yeah, it was, like, it was like a situation with my birth mother. And I kind of just, you know what I'm saying? I came to Toronto and shit. Yeah. Foster care and shit, you know? Okay, okay. But it's lit. How does life compare uh, in Toronto compared to um, Detroit? You know what I'm saying? I was super young when I when I left there, you know what I'm saying? Okay. But, you know, the stories I've heard, obviously, like, you know, it's super poor. Mm. A lot of violence, a lot of, a lot of corruption with the government and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's different than out here, you know? Toronto is generally a good city compared to a city like Detroit, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, um, so you're saying, like, you grew up kind of, like, in Durham area. Did that, like, influence your music? Like, was there, like, a, like a Durham sound, like, when you rap, or it's, like, every area kind of has their own type of sauce? Uh, I don't even know, man. I just... You just I go in your, you, you go, you hop in the booth, you just do your thing. All right? just saying, get yeah, in the zone. niggas are copying other niggas out here, it's just that they don't have their own lane. I have my right. own lane. I have my own sound out here. Okay, you okay. You know I ain't got to copy all the niggas out here. <laughs> I hear that, I hear that. <laughs> all right, so, um, so, uh, growing up, like, what was your favorite artist that you, like, you grew up listening to? 100% Chief Keef. Oh, like, yeah, when yeah. I was in grade 8, the only fucking person I listened to was Chief Keef. Like, 100%, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's Facts. that one track by him? Earned it? When that shit came yeah, out, yeah. I got my fucking dream. Oh, yeah, that, that shit came That was a banger. Uh, that was a banger. <laughs> stuff. Chief Keef, he really changed like the whole music scene. Like He flipped the whole music scene around. Like Everybody was trying to be like Chief Keef, you know? That's, That's what I'm true. saying, but when I, when I was in fucking you know, 8th grade, when I started listening to rap music and started rapping and shit, that was in like... 2017 you know what i'm saying so okay. he was already like yeah. he was already at his peak and shit so yeah but I honestly i always i always fuck with the the music from the generation that was older than me because i got older siblings and shit yeah i hang around with older niggas and shit you know facts facts all right so um yeah if you could collab with like three artists right now you can choose like any artist the biggest artists like drake and all those guys like three artists that you could collab with who would you choose Probably Drake. Drake could be on the list 100% because you know it's Drake. Yeah. Um, I collab with Dirty Nard. He's a Bronco Boy Nard, you know what I'm saying? He's a Detroit rapper from Seven Mile, Detroit. Okay. I've never heard of him, stuff. Yeah, he's another Detroit yeah. rapper, you know what I'm saying? I'm from Eight Mile in Detroit. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know that because of Eminem, that's the first thing that comes to mind. Yeah. And like yeah. T Grizzly and like 42 Dog is from there too, right? Yeah, they're all yeah. from my hood. Yeah, All those guys are from my hood there. That's true. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of niggas move from that area now, you know? Yeah, it's a pretty true. dead city nowadays, you know? Facts, facts. All right, so um, how do you feel about, like, people saying that the look is more important than the music, like your image, you know? Like, because sometimes people, they might take in the drip and stuff more than they might take in the music nowadays, you know? So how do you feel about that? Listen, bro. I'm from the streets, man. I'm from the streets, man. I used to, I used to stop, I used to shop at fucking Salvation Army, the secondhand stores and shit. So I don't really care if I'm dripping in something I bought from a store. I'm thankful as fuck. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not the type of nigga that be wasting my money on designing and shit. You know what I'm saying? I like to look at that shit, but I ain't the one to go shop 
and buy up a whole store, you know what I'm saying? I'd rather invest my money into music videos or projects. Like, mm. any check I get, any type of money I come across, it just goes into my music. Facts. That's you you got you to gotta invest in yourself, you know? That's what I'm saying, true, you know? So. Even when I was fucking 15, I'd ask for money for my birthday, you know? Yeah. i just spend it on a music video. Facts, facts, facts. That's good stuff. A lot of people, they waste their money. They just throw their money out because they're trying to keep up and stuff, you know? But it's good that That's you're in your own lane. I never had to keep up with a lot of niggas in school because I got kicked out of school oh, but in God. grade nine. You know what I'm saying? I got kicked out of school my first semester in high school. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of older white niggas was, you know, getting at me and shit. Right. So I had to defend myself. I got kicked out. Nothing happened to them, you know? Some racist ass shit, to be honest with you, but you know what I'm saying? That. We still killing shit. <laughs> I hear that, I hear that. All right, so, um, so if you could choose right now from signing to a major label or staying independent, what would you choose? Fucking label, bro. Listen, bro, everyone's saying they want to be independent, but realistically, my sound isn't the same sound as everybody else in Toronto, so it's hard to come up when I'm independent and I don't have the same sound as the rest of these niggas, you know what I'm saying? So I gotta, I gotta sign to a label that will get my music in front of a next audience in the States or even anywhere, bro. Cause you know, we got the whole world out here, bunch of fans available and shit for all that, you know? That's true. But some people say that um, labels are kind of useless nowadays cause of social media, you know? You can kind of get yourself out there without even needing a label and stuff. So how, how do you feel about that? Or do you still think like, Labels could actually like help out a lot. Labels help out, man. Everyone's saying to be independent. Listen, man, I fuck with the independent movement when I'm trying to come up, but when I'm trying to branch out and actually make it, I need to get signed. That's true. Facts. Uh, so, um, in your opinion, what do you think is like the realest bar that you ever wrote? Like, if you had to choose one bar. Dangerous. Dangerous. I was born in the deer. It's dangerous. I still pray to God for the same shit. Want to meet him or make some arrangements. Okay, That's okay. one of my bars in my track gang shit. What about that bar do you think feels like resonates with you the most? If you had like, why did you, why would you choose that bar as like your real? You know what I'm song? saying? When I say, I still pray to God for the same shit. Want to meet him or make some arrangements. That's like, I still pray to God for the same shit. I've been praying to him for the past 17 years of my life. That's why I said that shit. And I said, if you want to meet him, I can make some arrangements, you know what I'm saying? Because I pray to God, I talk to God every day. I grew up going to church and shit. So if, if a nigga want to step up to me and get disrespectful with him, I might punch him in the face. Or like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas try to smile at one of my niggas, I might, I might have to do, I might have to do him dirty. But you know what? If you want to meet God, I, if you want to meet God, I can make those arrangements, you know what I'm saying? Okay, okay. That's a message you yeah, that's tough. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, tough. <laughs> you know, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. That's tough. Alright, All right, so um in your opinion, uh which artist do you think like inspired you the most like growing up? Or maybe inspired your style of music or uh like kinda gave you inspiration. My style of music. Uh, it's funny bro, cause I only put out certain music that I make, but I make all types of music, you know what I'm saying? That's the thing, like, I can't really say who influenced me to make this track, this track, because I have so many. The tracks I put out, is just like, okay, this this one sounds neat, it's gonna pop right now, you know what I'm saying? Because everything trending or some shit. But that's what I've been really doing. I've been trying to go viral with the music I've been putting out. Facts, I hear that, I hear that. All right, so um, with your song, uh, Double Dutch, like that upcoming track, how did that come about? Was that a freestyle or like was that something you wrote, you wrote down and stuff? No, it's fine. No, it's Listen, man. Double Dutch, Double Dutch is a funny track. This nigga was here when I recorded it. This guy was here when I recorded it. Too fire. You know what I'm saying? We're just in the cut with it in the studio in Oshawa. You know what I'm okay. saying? So we're just recording and shit. And that shit just came out. It's coming soon and it's a banger, you know? Okay, okay. Alright, so um, do you have any like mixtapes or EPs coming out? Hell yeah, I'm dropping, I'm dropping my first, my first tape ever. My first tape ever is called Blame Child, Blame Child the EP, you know what I'm saying? Cause I'm a blame child, I took the blame out here man, in these streets. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
Uh, so uh, you, do you have any like shout outs you want to make like any of your homies that are rapping or something like that? Like? Yeah, shout out to my boy Troy Jacobs. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah, probably yeah. get his Instagram yeah. somewhere, some shit in the video. Uh, That's my boy. You know what I'm saying? This guy's doing his thing too with the music shit. But uh, I ain't gonna say too much. This guy's gonna do his thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. gonna be up just like all the other niggas like me. Man. <laughs> so, and I'm all right. So that was YK Glizzy, A Night in the Six, and we're out. Yes,